Hey Alex, it seems like 24 hours ago you guys must have loved that video of Sex Game Work Bullies Part 1. It's, it's well received because it's not even 24 hours yet and when you click onto the video it'll probably say 20 or 21 views but on my computer tablet it's 39 views. So I'm sure by the next day it'll probably break 45 maybe 50 views. Yeah, I said some real stuff in that video. That was for men that were from the ages of 18 to 35. Now, in this video, it's going to be about women. So, I already did it from a man's perspective. And I've had three jobs in four years, so I can give you a woman's perspective. Normally, it would be a woman in front of the camera to explain from a woman's perspective. But in the past... When I've done my social YouTube videos in the past with my old YouTube channels, a lot of women would decline to be interviewed because they felt uncomfortable on camera, um, their baby daddy could see their video, they was afraid that a co-worker could see the video, so you have to understand why you always see me in front of the camera talking. Now, in the near future, I probably might get some co-workers at my old job who feel comfortable coming on camera to speak on from a woman's perspective when it comes to why a woman think a man cheat or why a woman would cheat. But to do those types of videos, I got to have free range and their schedule got to be available and they have to say yes to being in front of the camera. And it's very hard to get a girl at your job to actually be in front of the camera and give a woman's perspective. Because what I just said, a lot of them have boyfriends and they're afraid their baby daddy might see it on camera. A co-worker and then some of them are just not, they're just not comfortable being in front of the camera. So it sucks when you see me all the time. But you have to understand that if I could get some women on camera that's brave and fearless and speak from a woman's perspective, it'd be easy. It's no different if I try to go down the street and talk to some female neighbors. They might do the same thing. So even if you suggest I should switch it up, it'd be a lot more harder than to try out. In the near future, I will try the unthinkable. And these videos will just get better and better and better. Now, it's Sex Game Work Bullies Part 2. Women from the ages of 18 to 35. Now, this doesn't matter if you're a black woman, a white woman, or a Mexican woman. Now, you might say, what about Asian women or white women? I mean, or, or um, Indian women. For the most part, most Asian women and most Indian women attend to work around their race. If they happen to get a job where it's a McDonald's, a Burger King, or a Taco Bell, it only might be because it's close to where they live at, or that's all that was available. So for reasons, we're going to go with black women, white women, and Mexican women, because about 80 to 85% of the time in the job market, these women are in these jobs that I'm about to make a reference to. You, know, you don't hear too much drama or too much gossip with Asian women or with Indian women. Usually they stay to themselves, they do their work, they put in their 8 or their 10 or 15, 20 hours, and they go home and they get ready for the next day. It's very rare that you ever hear any news come up with those races of women. If it does, it's probably small, minor, not too serious. So we're going to focus on black women, white women, and Mexican women from the ages of 18 to 35. Now, let's start with the obvious, the black woman. If the black woman is from a scale from one to take from one to ten, if she is an eight, a nine, or a ten, and she gets eighty to eighty-five and sometimes ninety percent of sexual attention from all races of men, right off the back, she is a target. And there's five reasons why that black woman becomes a target. You know, you got that nice athletic body, you got that curvy body, that big butt, them big breasts, you know, you got them African features, you're physically sexually attractive, white men be trying to get that phone number, black men be trying to get that phone number, the Mexican man be trying to get that phone number. If there are any Asian and Indian men in these working environments, they be trying to get that phone number. You know, I, I got to be PG. I want to say they're going to be trying to holler at that you know what. So I'm going to say they're going to be trying to holler for that phone number. And guess what? 
And it does not matter if it's McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Del Taco, Carl's Jr. I don't care if it's Foot Locker. I don't care if it's Lady Foot Locker. I don't care if it's um, the clothing stores. It could be a, a, a Old Navy. It could be the Gap. It could be H&M. It could be Forever 21. It don't matter where um, the work environment's at. It doesn't matter if it's seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. If you're a young, attractive black woman from the age of 18 to 29... You're a big time target because if you're getting 80 to 85 percent of the attention and then if it's summertime where the sales go up in the clothing stores and you're getting 90 percent of the attention, you become a target. That means every time you come to work, you got three people following you. You, you know, you go upstairs, you get two or three managers or supervisors that go upstairs. You go downstairs, you get two or three managers to follow you downstairs. You go to the front. They follow you to the front. You go to the back, they follow you to the back. You go to lunch, they go to lunch with you. You, you come back from your lunch, they come back from your lunch around the same time. Because they're trying to figure out how is it that you can get 80 to 85% and then right in the middle of the summertime where we have the best sales, 90% of men's attention. See, I know this, this is an old story because it's about one year and six months that I was at this retail store in a high-class residential area. And no, I cannot tell you the name of the store because it's owned by Nordstrom's. And there are some new and past and present co-workers that still associate with that store. And if they see this YouTube video, um, that could be fair game. Because then Nordstrom's can come in and sue me for making the video without their consent. Not that they'll sue me. It's if you name the store that they own. And you say something bad about both the store's reputation. I'm not talking about the store's reputation. I'm talking about the nature of the situation of giving you a prime example on why I say if you're a black woman from the age of 18 to 29, you become a target. I will get if what happens if you're 30 or 35. I will get to that. Now, there was this one black girl that was dark skinned that was what they called the boss chick. Every man was trying to get the boss chick. She was fine as hell for a dark-skinned black woman. I mean, every guy would come, every time they come in the store, they always came to her cash register to get their clothes ringed up so they can just ask for that phone number. I mean, they would try to ask her out to lunch and dinner, a cup of coffee, and I would say maybe 10 to maybe 15 times in one week, she had to reject a lot of these men. These were average and below average men that would get rejected. So some 10 to 15 times in one week, they got rejected. Because she didn't find these men physically sexually attractive. But when you get guys that play professional basketball and football roll up into the store, oh, she was just happy as you can be. You know, she didn't mind them hitting on her. She didn't mind them asking her out to lunch and dinner or a cup of coffee. And I think the first time she tried it with a basketball player, she got shot down. Because the basketball player was happily married with three children. So, she got rejected the first time. The second time she got rejected, it was because the, as they say in the hood, the baby mama, you know, came into the store to make sure nobody hit on her man. So, that's two times it didn't happen. She succeeded on the third try because this guy had broke up with his girlfriend and he had just started playing professional football. Not in the NFL, but semi-pro football. He was trying to get into the NFL. He dated her for about two or three months before they broke up. See, all of this information I'm telling you, I wasn't there my first, I wasn't there in 2017. This was like a year before I got hired. I only heard this information because, you know, a lot of the girls gossip, a lot of the girls talk, can't keep their mouth closed, so that's how I found out about it. But she always had men come to her cash register. And guess what? They got jealous and resentful. Now, she's like about 27, 28 years old when I saw her and when I first met her. And, you know... I tried to say hi to her, and she kind of had this look on her face like, uh, I'm too fine for you to be talking to me. You're just a security guard. You ain't all that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And they couldn't stand this black woman. You know, they would talk about her at lunchtime, talk about her in the office. 
I mean, I'm talking about the stuff women would say about another woman. Oh, I would have just cut her hair short, set her hair on fire. Uh, uh, she thinks she all that in a bag of chips. She don't even work half the shift. She thinks she all that. You know, just talking trash about this girl. And when you go into this work environment, you will find out that it's a lot of older women who can't stand younger women. And younger women hate older women. Because older women have all the power and all the control and the working environment. And the younger woman wants to be just like the older women. They want the power and the control. But the younger woman has more power and more control with her sexual attraction at work than she realizes. If the girl's 18, 19, 20, 21 years old or 22, she can beat out. A woman that's 30 years old. She can beat out a woman that's 35. If someone tries to be a smart a smart aleck and say, what about if she's 40? She can beat out a woman that's 40 years old. So I guess we'll put in the description um, from the age of 18 uh, to 29. And instead of 30 to 35, we'll just put from age 30 to age 40. So that way, don't nobody say, well, what about if it's a 40-year-old? So we'll, just th we'll include a woman that's 40. So don't no one get upset. And you'll find out in this working environment, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Del Taco, Jack in the Box, Carl's Jr. I don't care if it's Foot Locker. I don't care if it's Lady Foot Locker. I don't care if it's H&M, The Gap, Forever 21. It does not matter what working environment. You know, it doesn't matter if the city location either. It doesn't matter if it's Hollywood, West Hollywood, Culver City, Santa Monica, The Grove. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Inglewood, because I know somebody's going to say name the cities and the location, so that's why I'm doing that in this video. You always got seven girls who get all the attention, and then there are seven girls that are jealous of the seven girls. It's like high school and college when it comes to young women and old women. It, it, it's like high school and college. Very childish, very petty. And they'll take their complaints to the security guard. They'll talk trash about another girl to a security guard, and you'd be thinking somebody robbed the store, somebody stole some pants or some purse. That's what you're thinking. You're thinking there's a fight at the cash register. You're thinking somebody trying to pay without actually paying with a credit card, and instead they come up to you to, gossiping about how, um, about, um, how, um, I can't stand her. Her hair and her nails is always done. She's always talking about what guy asked her out to lunch and dinner on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you'd be looking like, that's some crap that you do in high school and college. You know, you're like 21, 22, 23, 24 years old, and you being petty and talking about stuff from high school and college. And you see this is how a lot of loss prevention security guards at clothing retail stores like Forever 21, get in trouble because then you get caught up in it and then the girl don't get in trouble, the man gets in trouble. But this ain't a man, man, man video, this is a woman's video. I'm just trying to tell you that's just one example. Then you have the ones where the girl does such a great job, it makes all the other girls' job look terrible. You like There could be a situation where a girl might have sold um, 15 pairs of a man's shirt, like let's use a perfect brand, Foot Locker, right? Let's say it's a basketball t-shirt of LeBron James or Stephen Curry. And let's say she'd have sold 15 t-shirts of Stephen Curry and maybe five shirts of LeBron James. And the other girls are only able to sell one, but she sold 15. Well, if she is the leader in sales for a whole week, that's another reason why they might hate you. But the main reason is if you're getting 80 to 85% of the attention or sometimes 90% of the attention, well, the same thing happens to a black woman that's physically, sexually attractive. You go from working 15, 20, 30 hours to all of a sudden working 10 hours. And then you go from 10 hours to 8 hours. Then you go from 8 hours to 6 hours. Next thing you know, you're only working 3 to 4 hours a day. And you're like, wait a minute, I, I was supposed to be working five or six times a week. Why I'm working only two times a week or three times a week? Because they cut your money, and when they cut your hours, they cut your money, you work less. The more hours you work, the more money you make. The less you work, the less money you make. 
they start cutting your hours. And and then if, if they make you come in the morning, they'll change your schedule whether they tell you or not and switch you to nighttime. Like instead of you coming at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, they'll have you come at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And you'll be like, why are you having me come later in the day? Because they don't want you getting all the attention from all the basketball players, football players, the actors. You might get an executive music producer. Because a lot of these women be talking about, um, I'm an R&B singer, I'm an inspiring supermodel. And that's the thing. Now, I can't tell women what to do, but this is what I wish women would stop doing at all jobs. Stop telling other women that you work with, oh, I'm an inspiring actress, I'm an aspiring model. Uh, I'm an R&B singer. I'm a female rapper. Stop telling them that. Because as soon as you tell seven or eight other women that, that that's what you do on your spare time, if they know that's what you love to do on the weekends, guess what they start doing to you on the weekends? They start taking some of those Saturdays and Sundays that you have days off, and they say, you know what? Let's give her Monday or Tuesday off. And let her work Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then intentionally on purpose, just to be rude and disrespectful, let's book her and schedule Saturday and Sunday when we know those are her days off. Now you can't get your hair done, can't get your nails done, can't go to 24-hour fitness, LA fitness, can't go to Planet Fitness, and then you be trying to figure out why are they doing this? And, then it, and it ain't just one week, it be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Before you know it, it be six to seven weeks before you get your hair and your nails done. Can't even go shopping. Can't go to H&M. Can't go to Gap. Can't go to Old Navy. Can't go to Forever 21 because they're taking your days off and they're turning them into working days. And then turn your working days into days off because they don't want you getting 80 to 85 percent, sometimes 90 percent of the attention from men. And it's even worse if it's a white man. If a white man come up in there and he love him some black women, then it's fair game. They'll they'll lie on you and say, oh, she was harassing the man. She was touching and feeling on the man. And, and, and the white guy might have not even said anything at all. The white guy could have said, oh, you fine. I like your hair. And the other girls be like, I got my hair done. He ain't paying attention to me. And the white guy will notice that the other seven girls are jealous of that one girl. And then that one guy has to be like, well, I'm going to have to tell you in privacy that the other girls are jealous. And then the white guy be trying to tell that black girl, be careful because they're jealous of you. And guess what? When that girl finds out that they don't like her, now she has to get a new job. Because now every time a guy comes in there and comes to her cash register... They be feeling some type of way. If you the light-skinned black woman, whoo, if you the light-skinned black girl, it's even worse. Because they going to be trying to cut your hair, set your hair on fire, steal your purse, steal your wallet. They're going to do something to make it clear to you that they don't like you. It ain't just young women that's going to be mad. It's going to be women that's 30 years old, women that's 35, 40 years old that's going to be upset. And then it turns into a contest. Who can sell the most clothes to, to men and women? And then I feel bad for a lot of the women who come to shop at the store because those women be trying to, you know, look good for, you know, for their husband or their boyfriend. And then they get two girls fighting at the cash register because they're trying to see who they're going to sell to. So a lot of the females be like, I don't understand why I'm in the middle of this mess. If you're a man, I feel bad for the guys because if you come in there and you say, well, it's my wife's birthday or it's my wife's anniversary and two women are fighting over you because you're physically sexually attractive, it's worse because you'd be like, all I'm just trying to do is buy uh, some clothes or something for my wife's birthday and I got an older woman and a younger woman fighting over me and then your wife will probably pop you upside your head and accuse you of cheating when that's not what you intended to do. Now, you see how I'm just throwing scenarios out here for you young, attractive women? That's if you're a young black woman. Now, if you're an older black woman, um, it happens too. If you're an older black woman, same scenario. So, it don't matter if you're a black woman and you're 30 years old, 35, or 40 years old. I've heard stories from my mother when she was alive that a lot of the older black women would also get harshly attacked. 
when my mom first got her job as a probation officer, they didn't like my mom. My mom had the best looking car. My mom had a car. They found out that my mom had two cars. They found out that my mom lived in the Baldwin Hills area. If you live here in Los Angeles, California, you know Baldwin Hills is a middle class estate. Think of Baldwin Hills as a black version of the Grove. I know that's not what I know that's not what you expect me to say, but just think of Baldwin Hills as the Grove. You got celebrities that go to the Grove. You have celebrities that go to Baldwin Hills, particularly Crenshaw. Just think of it as that. You got rich, famous Hollywood celebrities at the Grove. You got some black Hollywood actors and filmmakers that go to Baldwin Hills. So just think of it as that. They found out my mom lived in that area. And I think for the first seven months, they made my mom very miserable. Every time my mom came to work, my mom came two or three hours earlier. They hated that. My mom always got the most attention and the most compliments. And my mom was not 30. My mom was not 35. My mom was not 40, 45. My mom was like 50 years old when this happened. My mom, when she was going to the gym and working out, they got jealous of that. Oh, she in athletic shape. Oh, she thinks she white. She eating her fruits and vegetables. Oh, she know how to speak Spanish. She know how to speak Portuguese. They hate that. If you're that light-skinned black girl that's young or older and you can speak three languages, five languages, they hate that. And then they start stealing from you. Like my mom had one time um, order a buffet where she had um, two slices of pizza, some salad, and I think it was like a cuisine, uh, an Italian cuisine, and she had some leftover food. And when she came from the restroom, someone... Um, five rolls down, went over there and stole it, and was jealous. Then when it was Valentine's Day, I gave my mom a Valentine's um, gift. Somebody stole my mom's Valentine's gift that I bought her. Um, so they'll steal stuff from, from other women, because you getting all the attention. Whenever my mom would go on girls' day out, or ladies' day out, to go drink, you know, alcohol or happy hour, um, and they take pictures and you post it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Other girls would come in the post and would say mean, disrespectful stuff like, Oh, I wish my hair was like that. I wish I had that skin color complexion. I'm just telling you the stuff my mom told me how cold-blooded women are in the workforce. So you could be a woman that's 30, 35, 40 years old and this can happen to you. Now let's get if you're a white woman. Most white women usually get attacked for three reasons. She have a crush on a black man or a Mexican man. If it's a white woman and she loves Mexican men, oh, they're going to make her life a living hell. And if you love you some black men, oh, they're going to get on you just because you love you some black men. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. There was this, I ain't going to say any names, but there was this one white girl that had a crush on me. And that was like, what do you see in a loss prevention security guard? Like, what do you see in him? He ain't rich. He ain't famous. He have an average job. So what do you see in him? And I don't know if she picked them on. They were jealous, but they were jealous of her because she was in athletic shape. Her hair was always fixed up. Her nails was always done. Guys were checking her out at the cash register. She was getting hit on by black men, Mexican men, white men, young men, older men. Uh, hell, they had some rich men come in there and she was getting hit on. And they trying to figure out how is this white girl getting all of this attention and you ain't even been here for a year. They would tell her to come downstairs and she would ignore their instructions. And then when I w would give her instructions on the radio, they took it personal. And then they started messing with her schedule. And then, you know, if they find out you go to college, oh, they really will mess with you. I've seen... Like, maybe in a year and a half, I've seen, like, nine girls like that, gone. It, it, not even the NBA Finals come up, they're gone. Like, the NBA Finals ain't even got here. The playoffs ain't even came yet. I've seen it. Now, if you're an older white woman, they usually don't mess with you if, if you're an older white woman because that's a double standard. Now, if they see an older white woman mess with a black man, they might, they might make an exception. 
because they know black men don't like older women, so they 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 know that they, they, they'll they'll be happy with that result. But if it's an older white woman that's in athletic shape and she like 27, 28, 29, they take it extremely personal because you're not fat and out of shape, which I'll get to the end of the video on that. Now let's get if you're a Latina woman, a young, attractive Mexican woman or an older Mexican woman. Now, if you're a young, attractive Latina woman, oh, it's hell all around because you might start off making friends for, for three months, for six, seven months, and then towards the end of the year, four or five of those girls will stab you in the back and talk about you behind your back if you get too much attention. There was this one Latina chick. I never asked what her name was. I, trust me, I don't know her name. But she had a crush on me. You know, she was like four, she was like four foot nine, four foot ten, close to five feet, short as I don't know what, but she was thick with junk in the trunk. Let's just put it that way. Fine Latina chick. And she had a crush on me. Because I was in great athletic shape. And next thing I know. Um, she worked there for about six months. And then she quit the job. Because she said they would do stuff to her. Like they would bring her in early in the morning. Where there was no, where, where there was no work for her to do. In the first three hours. And then they would complain, why, like, why are you not working? But they would bring her so early in the morning because they didn't want her to talk to people like me. And when she couldn't talk to me, then she started talking to the white guys that they had at the store. They didn't like that, so they stopped that. And then around the time I got scheduled to come in, that's when she would come in to be scheduled. Then she would wait until none of the managers and supervisors were around and then start hitting on me. And then a lot of them saw that on camera. And they had an issue with it. And once she saw that they were not going to stop messing with her. She left. Then when they talked her into quitting her job at another store. And come back over to our division. She didn't even get no call back. And when I saw her come for an interview. I was kind of like giving her this look like they're not going to bring you back. Because you've been hitting on me. You've been putting out the signals. You've been showing me your junk in the trunk. And they be like, okay, we got this 18, 19 year old girl that thinks she gonna, thinks she gonna get us stood. We're gonna have to stop that. And this, and these weren't no men doing this. This was an older woman putting a stop to this. And that's just one girl. Then they had a European girl that used to come in our store and shop all the time. And she worked for a company. They saw that I was getting too much attention from a European woman. And less than six months, they ran her up out of there. They didn't like her either. They're like, why is it? And they be looking like, it's a European woman paying attention to a loss prevention security girl. You're supposed to be talking to guys that are high value, high status, rich. He lost prevention. He ain't nobody. I'm trying to tell you the mind of how people be thinking. Now, I'm going to finish off the video because it's getting too long. Now, that I explain what happens if you're a young black woman, an older black woman? What happens if you're a young white woman, an older white woman? And the same thing would be said if you're an older Mexican woman. Now, here's where we get to why uh, the average and below average women will do certain things. They will do things like mess you up. Like, I've seen women get worked and be forced to work five hours or six hours without a lunch. And then these women end up going to McDonald's or Burger King and you eat that fast food for like three months, six months, or nine months. And then guess what happens? You end up gaining 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds of body fat. And next thing you know, you're between 200 to 260 pounds in nine months because... The average and below average women sabotage the young, attractive women. They don't want you getting 80, 85, 90% of the attention from white men, black men, and Latino men. Any professional basketball players like a LeBron James, a Dwayne Wade, or um, Stephen Curry come into the store and you get all the attention, you become the target. And that's why I said I've seen nine girls in a year and a half leave because they couldn't handle being bullied and messed with. 
Now, it's 50-50 because here on the West Coast, it happens 60% of the time. And on the East Coast, it happens some 40% of the time. So, it don't matter if you work at Macy's, JCPenney's, Old Navy, The Gap, H&M, Forever 21, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, Foot Locker, Lady Foot Locker. Don't matter what working area that you work in. If you getting that much attention from men... Don't be mad if a woman 30, 35 years old or 40 years old takes it personal. Now, when it's a woman that's 30, 35 or 40 years old getting all the attention, um, it's the same thing. Every now and then you might get a young woman that might sabotage a woman that's 30 or 40 years old. But most of the time, it's going to be a woman that's 30, 35 or 40 years old. That's going to sabotage women from the age of 18 to 29 because they're fighting over getting the attention of a high value male. So when they say hypergamous, I guess we can say hypergamous exists in the working environment. So this video advice is for women. Men, you can watch the video because if you come in the store and you got two women fighting over you, you may not know what that's really about. And then you become a casualty because you don't know why you're in the middle of something. And then you get hurt in the process. Women, because you may not know why you're being targeted or single. Even at my new job where I'm a dishwasher in the restaurant business, it still applies. And guess what? There was this one fine Latina chick that had a crush on me at my new job. And guess what? I don't see her no more. Now, you might assume she on her two-week or three-week vacation, but you only get a two-week or three-week vacation if you've been there for two. If you've been at a job for two years, you get a two-week vacation. You've been on a job for three years, you get a three-week vacation. That's how that works. If you don't see somebody after three weeks, they ran her away. The most finest woman, the most finest white woman or black woman or Mexican woman usually gets run away in six to nine months, they run that girl away. It could be two or three years later, they'll run that girl away if she's getting too much male attention. You know, your hair is always fixed up. Your nails is always done. You're always being asked out to lunch and dinner for a cup of coffee. You're always posting it up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Oh, and then you are trying to be a model or an actress on the weekends. And then you get Saturdays and Sundays off. Oh, they're going to be mad at you. And then if you pick up someone like a basketball or a football player, oh, they're really going to be upset with you. See, I just thought I'd tell you young women and put y'all up on some game so y'all can know what's going to happen before it happens. So you can't say that ain't nobody told you in this video what happens. Until then, peace.